Hi folks, uh, it's been a while, at least a month, and I've been doing plenty of tying, uh, lots of different designs, uh, but I've been tying with synthetics a lot more recently, um, just to just to see what the move movement's like, um, and to come up with some new ideas, and uh, yeah, just just enjoying my tying at the moment. Um, I must try and remember to smile more on, my, on the camera. I've also got a got a new new sound system here uh, the, the other mic was just an absolute nightmare to work with so I bought a, a Rode Smart Lab Plus so I'm giving that a go for the first time now I seem to be doing more and more of talking videos um, so today we're going to tie a, a deceiver pattern but we're not going to use bucktail in the traditional way we're going to use uh, jerkbait mania pipe skins and a few other materials as well which I'll go into in more detail during the tying steps um, this one is tied for pike, um, but you can downsize these for Xander uh, and go really small for perch as well. Um, um, I've decided on this fly moves better if I use two hooks. So a heavier hook on the back. I get a better jerk action with it, with that weight. You can use a shank on the back or you could use a hook and maybe cut the cut the tip off if you don't like using two hooks I don't personally have a problem with it um, I don't um, very often hook pike on that back hook anyway so the hook is really more for to balance the fly and to keel it properly um, yeah so it's a very simple type of fly to tie and there's a few bits and pieces that I may not have shown before um, I'm also going to add some buoyancy to this this one I'm tying today um, just to stop that fly sinking and get some neutral buoyancy with it. So for that, um, we could do a number of things. We could incorporate more, we could incorporate bucktail near the head or deer hair, um, but I'm gonna make it really simple and I'm just gonna add a, a small piece of foam behind the tine, just to give it a little bit of buoyancy in the head area so it doesn't dive down. Um, and also that helps with the jerk movement as well. Okay, so let's get tying. So in the vise we've got a Arex PR320 2.0 and this is going to be our trailing hook. Uh, the thread I'm using is um, Vivas PB2 140. Um, you could use GSP if you want to but there's really no need because we're not using bucktail for this. So I've got loads of PB140 lying around so I'm going to use that for this fly. Um, so I've already put the um, the strung hackle. I'm just using standard white strung hackle uh, for the tail. Um, you can use whatever you want. You can use schlappen, um, but it's quite important to have a tail on here because um, it does add uh, quite a lot of movement to the back end of the, far, the fly. You get a, a good wiggle with it. So I've already tied that in and I just need to put a bit of glue down on the top like so. Right, for the uh, for the shank, the hook, we're going to go up the shank with um, Deer Creek. I think it's called Predator Wrap, and this one's a sort of silver, pearly coloured variety. Uh, I use this a lot. I really like this stuff because it's nice and long, and you can cut it down to size, which is what we'll do with this fly. So I'm just going to tie that in. Now you don't need to go too dense with this, so we're going to do quite loose, quite loose wraps all the way down to near the eye. You just need a little, need to leave a little bit of space for the next material. Just come over, leave about a millimetre or two behind the wraps. Just come down towards the eye. Nice and tight. and tie that off a few turns over and a couple over the top tie that down and make sure it's secured get off the excess now this is quite long now so what I'm going to do with this I'm just going to pull this lot up and I'm going to shorten it take about a third off like that you'll have a few long ones you'll miss so you can always trim those up doesn't matter if you want to leave them long. 
I just prefer it slightly shorter. So next we need to use some Jerkbait Mania pike skins. It's very easy to overdo it with pike skins, so we just need to take a small amount from the bag. Something like that, not too much. And we're going to cut that in half because we can use half on the top and half on the bottom. But maybe maybe slightly more than half on top. So we'll just go slightly over half to about to about there. Cut that in half. So the slightly longer half we need to taper. And it really depends how, how much how how much you need depending on what fly size fly you're tying. So I'd say we probably need about four inches for this one. We just want it slightly coming over the the saddle feather. So tie that in 60-40 like so. Don't need much because we're going to use this again on the other hook in a number of places so we just need to be careful how much we use. Again we need to taper, taper the ends, give it a roll, get rid of any super long ones that, that didn't cut properly. And again we're going to tie that underneath probably about 60-40. If you use too much of this the fly becomes quite heavy to cast so you just need to Think about the proportions of this fly as you're building it up. So we're just going to bend that back. We're not going to tie over the top because you want to create a slight bump there to support the, uh, the flash materials that we're going to add next. As you can see, it tends to behave itself, which is good, which is more I can say about bucktail. Although I wouldn't say this was a replacement, but it's you know it works well and it swims well in the water. There you go, just build a slight dam in front of that, maybe take your comb and brush through it just to spread those fibres out like that. Next we're going to use some Hedron Polar Flash. It's up to you what colour you use I and mean, I've got a quite a like a pearlescent colour, lots of greens in there, some silvers um, I've got another one that I've used on this fly that's got quite a lot of pink in there as well. So it's just to add a slight contrast to the fly and add a bit of interest, a little bit of flash, but not too much. We get quite a lot of flash from the, um, the, the predator's wrap that's underneath it. So you don't need to add too much. It really depends on how the fish react in your water. I mean, some waters are quite shy to flashy flies and maybe you want to go sparsely with the flash on your fly. So we don't need the full hank here. Probably need, I don't know, we're going to come back to, to in the same length as the flash, maybe slightly more, and we're going to double it over. So we probably need about three quarters. And again, we need to taper the ends. And just pull that through, make sure those ends are tapered. They usually do once you've tapered one. There we go. So we're going to come slightly over the top, and wrap that round a few turns to secure it in place. And we're going to turn this over now. We're going to come underneath. Just make sure that flash is evenly distributed. Doesn't have to be exact like that. And then finish off that head. There we go. You could fish that on its own now for perch or zander. You know, that's a good size. Super easy. Look how long that took me? Probably five minutes. Just stick some eyes on it if you want and fish it. We're finished. Add some glue. Super glue, liquid fusion, UV, whatever you want. Okay, so that's the tail done. Didn't take long at all. For the front of the fly, we're going to use um, 
again Arex uh, Predator uh, PR320 uh, but we're going to use the 4 so slightly bigger than we have on the back these are very good hooks they're very um, they're very strong they've got some weight to them as well uh, so they kill the, the fly properly which is what we want the hook's too light you'll find that the fly doesn't always swim the way you want it to so we'll put that in the vise like so we'll put some thread down take off the excess add some glue Too much just a little bit way too much and next we want to add um, some wire to hold that back hook we don't want to use monofilament for this we don't want to use wire if we can uh, we've got some different options I, I used various things I've used shanks on the back I've used seven strands to Kuma 50 pound which is really stiff if, if I'm not adding a, a bead link to lengthen it out but this time I'm just going to use um, Partridge 40 pound uh, uh, I think it's 49 strand, so it, it'll last longer. I mean, these lines won't last forever, unfortunately. But um, it will last you probably the life of the fly. We'll see. Depends how many fish we catch. Okay, so tie that down. We want to go towards where the barb is, so it's slightly down the bend of the hook. I'll explain why in a second. And for this one, I just add two two beads to it. It's usually enough spacing. And we thread that through. The hook is going to be pointing down. We thread that through. Get everything straightened up. So you want to leave it. You want to leave. A slight loop at the back here to give a, the fly enough room to move. To, to, to about there I think is fine. Then come down over the top to make sure that loop is straight. I'm just going to tie down and come underneath and back over. So that's plenty of movement there. Plenty of um, movement for that fly to move at the back, and it shouldn't snag so often. It will snag from time to time, but not very often. It depends on what your casting's like. Come over all the way down, and then we're going to take a little bit of that excess off. And that last piece we're going to come underneath. All fingers and thumbs today just to secure it in place. I don't think it's 100% necessary. I mean, that, that, if you tied that down hard enough, that, that um, the link isn't gonna slip. Just be careful when you come over the, the cut piece of wire, because that will bend out. So come down, nice and tight. Go underneath. If you find this is dipping, which mine is slightly, just pull those beads away a little bit come underneath a few times just to force it back up there we go doesn't matter too much okay so we're going to come near there we're going to put some glue on that next we're going to put some more predator wrap i think it's called i can never remember what it's called I'll put it in the description anyway. I'm going to tie that in. We don't want to come too far with this. So we're going to put about, I don't know, a centimetre at most. Just to tidy that end up. Like that. Tie that off. If you catch a few, doesn't matter so much. Tied it off. Take off the excess. Let's get that 
tail to behave itself like so right so we need to come in with some more pike skins so we're going to use slightly more not so not too much but just a little bit more than we did last time just to build up that profile and again we're going to cut it in half And we're going to use got quite a long piece there, so I just need to trim that up. It's the trouble when you take it out of the packet, you do lose a few, so I might add a little bit more to that. Like so. So we want to make sure those ends are tapered again. Let's do some trimming afterwards. So we want to come down to about halfway to where the other one um, was tied in. So again, probably about 60-40. Come over the top, do the same for underneath. Again, just make sure the ends are tapered. Put any super long ones. Don't need those. Just to thin it out. Just roll your fingers along the top. So it's not a quick, it's not a, a time-consuming fly to tie. Just tie that in. A few wraps. We're going to pull this back. We're going to do the same for underneath. We're just going to split it. Just pull it back. Just get caught in the thread. Just use our finger to force that back. Just position that hook a little bit as well because it's. It's moved. Come on. There we go. That's locked in place now. So we're not going to go over. I just want that to show its profile a bit. There we go. And add the flash again. Slightly more this time than we did for the tail. Again, using Polar Flash, you can use whatever flash you want. I've used uh, normal, standard um, Hedron uh, Flashaboo in this. In different colours, I've used silver, sort of opal colours. I've used red. And you don't have to tie this colour either. You can tie whatever colour you want. You can tie some perch, uh, green coloured, whatever you want. So let's just wrap that round. 50-50, we've tapered it. Spread that back. Like that. I'll put some glue down to keep that in place. Right, again we need to come come over with a predator wrap. We probably want to come to about where my threads ended here, so about eight to ten millimeters. But as I said, we're going to do something slightly different with this fly. We're going to add a little bit of buoyancy to the head, just to get it to sit there in the water. We'll sink ever so slowly. So the wraps are quite tight, so we're not spreading it along the shank so much. We just want to bulk up that body to keep its, its bait fish profile. Cut off the excess. Okay, so what we're going to do with this, just going to tie that down. We've created a bump there, which will act for this uh, plus that block that I've cut out to size, which will sit inside here. So what I need to do is just tie this off. Split finish. Add some more glue. Quite a lot of glue around it. I've already made a hole in this, 
with a, a dubbing needle. I'm just going to force this through. I'm just going to force it over here. Like that. We're going to tie our thread back on. Check it straight, it is indeed. So hopefully that glue will set into the foam and keep it keep it um, in place. So I'm not going to tie this down. But what I'm going to do to, um, to cover this is I'm going to create a dubbing loop and go over it with some orange Hedron Strong Fuzzy Fibre, which I use quite a lot and you may have seen on my Instagram. Somewhere is my dubbing needle. There it is. My dubbing needle, my spinner. There we go. So we need some wax. I just need to bring that thread forward a little bit. Like so. Give it some wax. And then we're going to use an orange. A nice bright orange. Now I used this on its own before, you probably see from these flies, just in here. And the fish, the, the fly swam really, really well as well without having the foam there. But I want this fly to hover in the water. This one slowly sinks head first and does jerk as well. So um, yeah, so I just want this fly to do something slightly different. So I'm going to take a small piece of strong fuzzy fiber and I'm going to cut it into uh, about an inch. So I'm going to double it over, do that again, and then one more time. I don't want too long. We just want it as a like a hot spot, just behind the eye. There you go. My battery's about to run out on my camera, which is awesome. So we need a, we've got about an inch of strong fuzzy fibre in here. Um, we do want it we want it quite a thick, quite a thick in density, just to cover that that foam and to brighten up a little bit. So just put it in there 50-50. We don't need to uh, taper it and then just spin. Give it a couple of spins. Just spin that out. Do that again, like so, and then just get your scissors in there. With the blades closed, just to pull out any any that are wrapped. You'll find spinning, doing double loops, easier with GSP, because there's no stretch to it to speak of. But you get a bit of stretch. So just pull that, not too tight, because it will break. Just check it's secure. It looks secure. And just pull those fibers to one side. Put your fingers, pull them to one side, and then wrap round as close to the head as possible. If you catch a few, it doesn't matter so much. Just wrap round. Like so. And tie that off. Come back over the time point to secure it, cut off the excess, and then just check you've got a nice even distribution, and then tie back. Give yourself a bit of space, and that secures it properly then. Okay, we haven't got much room here now. So the next bit, we need to add a little bit more pike skins for the final time. So we're going to have a white underbelly, and we're going to have a a grey um, mix blended with a little bit of black as well. I think this is called pewter, it's mixed with 
think it's mixed with grey and purple or lilac. Oh, we don't need loads of this. Again, cut 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 the pipe skins in half. You won't. I don't think you'll need all of it. Add some black. Not too much. There's always some black in there already, so that's that's cool. And just blend that together. And then we can see where we are in terms of what how much we need to add. There you go, like that. Right, so we want to come to about two thirds down the the other shoulder to build a profile and to darken that back a bit. So we probably don't need all of this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut a good inch off and I'm gonna taper those ends. Just tape them like that. So we're gonna finish the head off a little bit of a little bit of wool. So like that. That's about right. And then tie that on 60-40 again. I'm going to try and come up a bit higher. It's going to slip down, but that's fine. That'll do. Just, just use your thumb to spread that around so it's nicely covered. We don't want all that, all that orange um, hidden. We want to show through. And I do the same with the white. About that much. Cut it in half. Add some from the other batch. Don't need all of it. And what you could do with this stuff, you could blend this with Angelina fiber or even um, Polar Flash. Just dub it together. But um, I, it's probably easier just to chuck it on top, chuck the flash on top, which is what we'll do next in a minute. There we go. That's about right. So check it's the same length as the other one. That's tapered. It is. We'll come underneath 60 40. Tie it down. Now this we're going to go, we're going to tie over the top because we've got a, a bit more tying to do here. I don't want to crowd that head too much because I've already crowded it more than I usually do. So I just need to be careful. It's the trouble sometimes with slippery synthetics, they don't always go where you want them to go. So you may have noticed I've been trimming off the ends of the polar flash. So I've kept those and I'm going to tie these in over this head now. I'm just going to make sure they're tapered, get rid of any super long ones. I'm just going to spread them round, tie them down and then bring them back. A bit like that. There we go. So we've got a nice, a nice shape to that head. So that flower is going to keep its profile in the water. So the last thing to do, well nearly the last thing, we're going to add some some wool. Now you can use um, predator dubbing, we can use, um, what's the other one, Deer Creek Mega Laser Dub. And there's, I think, Sunya Laser Dub as well. Or you can just make your own, which is what I tend to do. So I've got a mix of light grey and dark grey, which I'm going to blend together. And I'm going to blend this with some blue Angelina fibre, because I've got loads of this stuff. So we'll do the top first. I'm just going to blend that together over a bin or something. get it all blended. It doesn't matter if it's not blended thoroughly. It's quite nice to add. See some different colours coming through there. And we probably don't need all of that. So what I'm going to do is going to take a little bit away. There we go. It's probably about right. So before I do that, I'm just going to add some glue down. Because I think this thread is going to slip now towards that head area. It's not a big deal, but we can 
can sort that out. I'm just going to come over. So there we go. It's going to slip. Go down over the top. Now we need some white. Like so. And then we're going to blend some, wherever I've put it, some pearl Angelina as well. So you can pick this up from craft stores or whatever. I might even put a link in my description where you can get this stuff from. Just blend that through. Again, you can tie these flies in whatever colour you want. I mean, I quite like brooch patterns. I also tie perch patterns as well. So about that much. Just make sure it's tapered. I come over the top. Like so. Out. I want to get blood on that white. And then separate those two and just force them back so it covers. And come forward and then start building another head up. Now we've got a bump here, which I don't usually have, but I've used foam this time, but that's no problem. What we can do, we can just cover that head build the bump up and we can colour it in with a sharpie pen. There's no problem at all. There we go, that's covered. Whip finish. I'm just going to get the comb and brush this through just to get rid of any loose fibres. Just brush it around so it's covered. So you, quite a lot comes out, so it's always worth adding a bit more than what you think you need. There we go. I need to put that hook somewhere because I'm going to catch my finger again. Okay, so what we need to do, we need a grey marker. I just want to cover that of that heading. I'm just going to put some darkness near the head. Just to darken it a bit, just rub your finger through it like so. And put some glue over the top. Underneath as well. Last but not least, we need to put some eyes on this one. So somewhere on my table are some eyes. And I really like these green roachy eyes from Deer Creek. These are 10 mil and they look really nice on this fly. As you can see from this one, they really pop. So to do that, you can do whatever you like and lots of different ways to glue eyes on. Uh, my preferred way with wool is to give it a soak with tear mender. So you do that careful. Just soak it in. It basically creates a, a solid base and it soaks all the way through to the thread wraps. It makes your fly a lot stronger. So we'll soak that through. And then you can put eyes straight onto this, but I always like to put a little bit of flexible glue on top. Like that. And that adds some eyes. So it's not a difficult fly to tie. It doesn't take too long. But it's worth putting a little bit of effort into your flies if you can. You will get better movement. It's also enjoyable. Just be careful you don't touch the tear mender because it will bobble. I, I've already done it with the bottle looks of things, <laughs> but it will dry if you don't play around too much. 
Now it depends on how you want the eyes to, to sit. On this one, I'm quite happy for the eyes to not be too spaced, too, too um, what's the word, um, flat on. These are quite flat on and these are quite wide. So they're probably, they will swim slightly different. But half the fun is working stuff out. And because I've got the, the foam behind it, it adds a bit more width to that fly and a bit more bulk, which is what I was looking for. So I'm hoping this will work as as I want it to. We'll see. But the final thing to do after you've after that glue is set, I can't do it now, is you can give it a coat of liquid fusion around the top, or you could use um, it's pretty much one of the only UVs I can use, unfortunately, due to an allergy. But um, UV uh, Fine Flex. So I, I use that on I've used that on these flies so far, and I'm it works really well. And a zero tack, as long as you've got a um, UV torch that's fully charged. If it's not fully charged, you will get tack. So you just need to make sure your torches have got new batteries in or fully charged. This is the Deer Creek uh, rechargeable, which I would recommend. It's a really good, really good torch. But yeah, and that was it. So give it, give it a go. Um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, follow me on Instagram, see what I'm up to. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. See you later, guys.